Hey guys, welcome back to another great game of CDH. Today's episode is a game I played over on Mental Misplay stream a few weeks ago. It was one of two great games we played. And if you want to see the first game we played, I'll have Alan's video linked in the corner and down below. Also, I wanted to announce I'll be going to MagicCon Vegas next week. So if you're in the area, let me know. I'll be jamming games of CDH all week long. Hey you, looking for a way to support the channel? Check out the Patreon. Want some cool MTG apparel? Check out the online shop. Or just looking to play some magic? Hit us up on our Discord. All right, block there. Kill that. Oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. Starting us off is Vave on her infamous landless IROG list. Rocking Bolas' Citadel and Snoop Lines with very few lands. And she means business. Next up is Hidden on Talion. And as you saw from last week's video, Talion is a beast, so Hidden's rocking Mab's list. In the third spot, we have Alan on Atali Primal Conqueror. This is one for one Rebels list, and it's all about rocking a 7 7 dino and stealing your opponent's spells. And lastly, we have Sean or Woodland Deckhouse on Jeskai Ishai. The murder bird is back, whacking people with triple damage or pinging the table with infinite mana. But without further ado, let's get onto the gameplay. Faith starts off the game with a Mox Amber and a Rogue Rack. She then casts a free land grant by revealing your hand of a Defense Grid, Delighted Halfling, Bowmasters, Dockside, Vamp Tutor, and an Infernal Plunge. She finds a Bayou but shortcuts as she casts a Delighted Halfling. Hidden as a Dark Slick shores his land, feeding into the Dockside as he casts a Mana Crypt into a Soul Ring. He said, do I feed into it? Yeah, yep, yeah, I do. Yeah, I definitely, I, I do. Alan plays and cracks a Verdant Catacombs and shocks in a Stomping Grounds. Shortcutting as he casts a Birds of Paradise, shipping the turn as he goes searching. Sean plays a Tundra, exiling Hidden from the game. Fave decides that even a Dockside for two is good enough as she casts the Goblin, passing after that. Hidden takes three from his Crypt and plays a Snow-Covered Island. He has the color requirement to now cast his commander Talion, to which Vave flashes in her Orcish Bowmaster, pinging the birds on ETB and still following that up with a Vampiric Tutor. She finds a card to put on top and the fairy then resolves, with Hidden naming one on the ETB. Alan was really hoping for that birds as he plays a Taiga's land, tapping two for a Gruul Signet and a Mox Diamond, discarding an Arid Mesa to do so. And at this point, Sean realizes he should have cast his Enlightened Tutor before the Talion, as he gives a card to Hidden and takes two. This also triggers the Bowmaster to ping Hidden, with Sean putting a Mana Crypt on top. Sean untaps and shocks in a Steam Vents. He casts his Tutored Mana Crypt and then his Commander Ishai. This does trigger Talion for another card to Hidden, and Vave pings Hidden again with the Bowmaster. Vave on her turn casts an Infernal Plunge, Stacking your dog side. This triggers Talion and Ishai, with Ishai growing before the Talion draw to prevent the Bowmaster from sniping the bird. Instead, Hidden is pinged for one, with Vave following it up with an uncountable one ring. She then taps the ring to draw and get a bird encounter. She then heads to combat and sends the 4 4 orc army at Hidden. Hidden takes another three from his crypt and casts a Gilded Drake. Ishai grows and the Drake resolves. Hidden wants to swap out with the Orcish Bowmaster, but Vave has other plans, as she casts a Fatal Push, trying to kill the Drake and stop the swap. This does trigger Talion for another card drawn, along with Ishai, with the Bowmaster's pinging Hidden. Hidden really wants that orc, as he packed negations it, to let the swap happen. Uh, cards in hand? Me? Mm -hmm. Everyone? Uh, I guess everyone. Three. Two. Three. All right, I would say oh, here, no. everybody, I'm going to give everyone a new hand with this windfall. Fuck me, that's so gross. Hidden has seven cards still in hand, and while he doesn't like refilling other people's hands, he thought it was too tempting not to try this. Everyone discards and draws seven, triggering the Bowmaster 21 times. Hidden points eight damage at Ishai, with the other 13 heading at Alan. Hidden has an island as land for turn, and ends his turn with combat, sending Talion at Alan for 3. 
Alan plays a mountain and casts his own crit. He decides to rip 7 as he casts his commander Atali. The diner resolves and on ETV exiles a Manglehorn from Alan, a Baron Master Wizard from Sean, a Timberwall from Vabe, and a Gitpro from Hidden. And there's a lot of debate in the table on what spells Alan actually should cast, as all but the Manglehorn trigger the tally. And with all the talk, Alan ends up casting the Manglehorn to blow up Hidden Soaring as well as the Tinderwall. Hidden draws off the Tinderwall, but Alan is done after that. John takes 3 from his crypt and then casts a Rhystic Study, pending his turn with a Sea of Clouds. Vave plays a Wooded Foothills as land and then channels a Besaju for 1 mana to blow up the Mana Crypt. Hidden grabs an Underground Sea with Vave then moving to combat, smacking Alan for 3 with the Drake, with the army heading at Sean. There are no blocks and Vave passes after that. Hi. I'm gonna pass the turn. I am dead. Oh, rip! <laughs> <sighs> I guess I got too greedy. I realized as I edited the video, I should have killed Vave's creatures. I blanked on it due to the ring's protection, and I'm not sure if that would have even saved me, as she still had the mana to besage you, but maybe that would have altered her plans. Alan then heads to his turn and takes three from his crypt. That's a three, I will take three damage. Hate it. Crypt, crypt is being a hater this game. Yeah, it's punishing us today. Three down to 15 feels fucking terrible. Big draws, let this be the nut. This is far, far from the nut. Aw. <laughs> Alan has a forest his land and has the combat. He sends his dino at Vave for seven, who blocks with her halfling. Mountain cycling in Oliphant for a taiga before damage actually happens. He then takes 5 due to the trample with Alan on his second main for telling a card. Sean takes 3 from his crypt and then for 3 casts his other commander Jessica, thrice reborn. Sean then down ticks to deal 1 damage to the orcish bowmaster Rorak and Alan's face. This does prompt a response from Vabe as she cracks her fetch for Badlands. Using her Mox Amber on a Pyroblast for the Rhystic, paying for the Rhystic. Sean doesn't like that and miscasts it, and Vave can't pay for it, but still responding to the Jessica trigger, casts a deadly Rollick, targeting Alan's Atali while she still can. She can't pay for the Rhystic, and after Sean draws, ping Sean with the Bowmaster and grows her army. Sean then plays a Flooded Strand as land with Vave at his end step, tapping her ring to draw two this time. Vave untaps and loses 2 from the ring, tapping the ring again on her main phase to draw 3. She plays a taiga as land for turn. You know we're getting long in the teeth when, uh, when Vave has fucking 3 lands out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know we're getting into those fucking, the delirious hours, holy shit, this game's going. Oh, game, game's over if that happens. <laughs> A Birds of Paradise then comes out with Vave giving Sean a card. She then heads the combat and sends her 6 6 Orc army at Sean for 6. Alan takes another 3 from his crypt and plays a Scalding Turn as land. He cracks it to grab out a land, and in response, Sean cracks his fetch. But he's only trying to save time as he finds a volcanic island with Alan grabbing a snow covered mountain. 9 mana then lets Alan recast his commander Atali. He doesn't pay for the Rhystic and the Dino resolves, exiling an Arbor Elf from Alan, a Lion's Eye Diamond from Sean, and a Mox Diamond from Vave. And with such seller hits, Alan decides not to cast any of them, as to not pay the Rhystic tax. Sean is finally safe from his crypt, and for two casts a Phantasmal Image. Alan does have a response, as he casts a Pyroblast, paying the one for the Rhystic as well with Sean responding with a swan song to give Alan a bird. The clone then resolves and enters as an Atali, hitting Athalia, Heretic Athar from himself, and an Orcish Lumberjack comes out from Vave. You get an Orcish Lumberjack for me. <laughs> I hope this is a fucking X spell, you scumbag. It's gonna, gonna be, be like the one name. Orcish Lumberjack! <laughs> lumberjack! <laughs> No! This is not my life. This is, yeah, not, this is what I, this is what I swung, swung for. An exotic orchard then comes out as land, following that up with a dockside, creating five treasures. 
Jessica is then minus to deal 1 damage to the Birds of Paradise, 1 to Vave, and Alan. With Vave, it Sean's end step Worldly Tutoring. She pays for the Rhystic and grabs a Fury to put on top. Vave untaps, draws her tutored card, and takes 3 from her ring, tapping it to draw her 4 more cards, and following it up by pitch casting the Fury, exiling a Gamble to do so, and paying for the Rhystic with the Simeon Spirit Guide. That's just draw um, cards out the window. We already we already Fave. expect to play, babe. You don't need to do all of that. <laughs> the elemental then ETBs and puts two damage on Thalia, a point on the Orcish Lumberjack from Fave, and the last point going at the clone to Tally to cause the illusion to sack itself. A Blintstain Meyer then comes out as Lamb, with her heading to combat after that, sending the six sick orc army at Sean, who jumps it with Alan's stolen lumberjack. Yep. And then I do have a question. Did you tell your lumberjack that you were the one that killed it, or are you just like lying to it for the rest of the Oh, uh, it's, he he knows his purpose is to feed a breach eventually. If I if I so demand it, Babe then cracks her fetch to bolt herself, grabbing an untapped overgrown tomb. Four mana then gets her beseech the mirror, bargaining away her one ring. She doesn't pay for the rhystic, and the spell resolves. She then tutors up and casts a culling ritual. She feeds Sean another card, and unfortunately, Sean doesn't have an answer. Nor can he crack his tap treasures, with Vave getting a total of 13 mana, with it being 2 green and 11 black. First up, she needs to deal with the Pesty Rhystic, as she casts a Nature's Claim, paying for the Rhystic. Next up is an Autumn's Veil to prevent counter spells, preceded by a Bolas's Citadel. A scheming cemetery then comes out, with Alan and her both tutoring up a card to the top of their libraries. With Vave's card being a goblin recruiter, casting the spell off the top with a bit of life from the citadel. She then makes a pile of goblins and casts a conspicuous snoop off the top, following it up with a torch courier. She reveals the Kijiki off the top and sacrifices the courier to give her snoop haste, letting the goblin tap to make a copy of the snoop making infinite tap snoops, with the last one tapping to make a copy of the Goblin Recruiter. She put a Sling Glang Lieutenant on top, letting her sacrifice the Goblin to drain out the table, giving Vave the game. And before I get onto the game review, I do want to thank a special Patreon member, Josh Shutt, for his support of the channel, along with all of our other Patreon supporters as well. Game review. Man, that game was a blast. I want to thank Alan again for having me on stream, even if I died a little early that game. And I know I should have played it way more cautious than going for a packed windfall play. But I really didn't expect both my artifacts to get blown up, or at least for players to have to cast more spells to hopefully draw me into either rituals or counter magic to stop the artifact destruction. But I give credit to Vave as she played the game brilliantly never seeming to be the threat while always gaining advantage whenever she did anything. Now, as for card advantage, I do think Alan got a little unlucky with his hits off a tally. He was still wary about feeding the Talion as he did last game, and I think he played a little too cautiously. I think not casting the Baron was a mistake, as with any recursion of his Dockside, he could have set up for infinite mana. And lastly, even though Sean had his Rhystic drawing him cards, he ran out of interaction protecting it. I do think that was the right play, but alas, he ran out in a crucial moment, and that was that. And as always, I want to thank all the players who joined for the games. And remember, never give up, even if you're dead on board. I'll see you guys later.